For the first time in more than eight months, it is men's hockey season on the heights. Second-ranked Boston College opens up its season against seventh-ranked UMass. Hi there, everybody. We are so privileged to be here with you for this one alongside Eric Galanti, Bill Spaulding. Really excited to be here and really excited for a great matchup to start Boston College's season. Top two teams in the preseason hockey East poll, UMass and BC. Yeah, it's kind of been amazing, the flexibility needed to get this year, get through this year in hockey East, and why not play the two top ten teams in this league to get going right away. Both teams are so excited just to get on the ice and get going. BC last played March 7th. At that game, they had sealed the deal with the Hockey East regular season championship. They were primed for a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Then everything stopped. And that has been the driving force this year for this Boston College team. So says senior Logan Hutzko. Personally, I would have been much more at peace with it if we would have lost. Uh, lost in the... In the semifinals or the finals, I, I would have been able to be at much more peace with it. But given the way that it ended, where we never even got to prove or see for ourselves what we could have done, um, that really, really hurts. So um, I just think accepting the challenge of uh, carrying that burden from last year onto this year and um, being able to show everyone uh, what we can do. We have the best teams in the country in our league. It gets your team better, and it gets your team ready to win national championships. Every night is a challenge with emphasis on every. But the players don't realize this. They make the coaches even better. Whatever school you're bringing in, unbelievable players. And they kind of make each other better. With players that are All-Americans, that are Kazmaier winners, I mean, it's amazing that we have so much talent in our league. Any good league has to have great players. We've got a lot of great players amongst the 11 teams. It makes the league premier league in college hockey. Boston College Eagle fans, when it's time for a new ride, soar to the McGovern Auto Group, a proud supporter of Boston College with over 5,000 quality vehicles to fit your lifestyle and budget. 92 Boston College alum Matt McGovern has built Boston's fastest growing automotive group with 14 family dealerships across the Boston Metro. Find the vehicle you're looking for and join your fellow Eagles, Matt McGovern, Mark Walker, Christine Hyde, and Tom Gilgariff at McGovern Auto Group. Visit them online at McGovernAuto.com and go Eagles! We are set for hockey at Kelly Rink inside the Conti Forum. UMass and Boston College, minute that hit second in the preseason hockey East Pole, Boston College first. For UMass, it's a two-headed monster at goal. Today, Matt Murray starts, which means tomorrow you'll likely see Philip Lindbergh for three years. Those two have gone back and forth, and, and there is nothing separating the two of them. I think you could argue they are goalies number two and three in hockey East. Most folks would say goalie number one in hockey East is Spencer Knight. Yeah, at least, you know, we have so many good goal tenders to the building no matter what order you rank and what a year it was as a freshman for Spencer Knight and for those UMass goaltenders including last week. We are underway game one for Boston College game three for UMass the Minutemen got a win and a tie last week against UConn. This game is officially a flex game. It does not count in the Hockey East standings as of now, but if things were to change in the schedules and they had to wipe out the second weekend between these two teams, they would retroactively make these conference games, so still loom pretty large. Boston College starting forward, freshman Nikito Nestorenko on the top line along with Jack McBain and Logan Hutzko, and Nestorenko bangs it deep for an icing. One major absence for Boston College, Alex Newhook, who was the top rookie in college hockey last year. He is in Canada with Canada's World Junior team in Red Deer, Alberta. They are bubbling for a month before World Junior, so he will not play with Boston College until the new year. Yeah, and that's obviously a key loss for BC, but still a lot of weapons in terms of their depth and forwards. Jerry York feels like he's going to have enough goal scoring this year, even until Newhook gets back. Meanwhile, notable absences in the UMass roster today. Defenseman Mark Del Geizel and Ty Farmer both out of the lineup today, which brings Lyndon Alger and Gianfranco Casero both in for the Minutemen. Here's Oliver Chow, top line forward working in the corner. Chow puts it on, and it goes wide of Spencer Knight. The Eagles clear it out with Hutzko, and they'll make their first line change, bringing out the second line, which today is Mike Hardman, paired up with uh, a guy who he paired up with a lot last year, Matt Boldy, and then freshman Colby Ambrosio rounding out that line. Here comes Hardman. Now a sophomore coming off a year with 12 goals and 13 assists in his freshman season. 
Big key to Boston College's lead 8-0-1 run at the end of last season was the all-freshman line of Hardman and Boldy and Newhook. Yeah, and it's an outstanding group that was just playing so well at the end of the year. Really, more than anything, what gave BC folks confidence that there was a long postseason run coming. UMass captain Jake Gaudet spills it away, comes back to Reed Lebster on the right wing. Third line out for the Minutemen. Lebster in, has it knocked away. Feels like this year for UMass, there's no one star. Greg Carvalho said, hey, there's no Hobie Baker winner on this team, but the scoring is deep, and you saw that last week. They got seven goals from seven different players in the two games against UConn. Yeah, when talking to him this week, the conversation around UMass is where are they getting scoring from this year, but he feels like it's there, and he says, hey, how about we talk about our defense, and we feel like we have the best unit in the league in that regard. Then why not win every game 3-2 this season? Doesn't have to be a track meet. Captain Mark McLaughlin whistles one high over the top of Murray and banging off the glass. McLaughlin centers the third line along with star freshman Trevor Kuntar and Patrick Giles, a player that Jerry York's really impressed with this year. Defenseman Matthew Kessel into the offensive end for UMass. Out of free-flowing play early, two and a half minutes in, and nary a whistle other than that early icing. On the doorstep, slamming it at night. He keeps it out, fighting off Anthony Del Geizo in front for his first save of the season. Top look in front. UMass is going to want to throw pucks in those dirty areas, try to beat Spencer Knight. It's not going to be a clean look if we've seen anything from last year that's going to get by Knight. So a good opportunity early for the Minutemen. The Eagles bring out their fourth line for the first time. That includes freshman Harrison Roy and Danny Wade, along with junior Casey Carew. Into the offensive end, Bobby Trevino, second line left winger and alternate captain. Fires it up to Oliver McDonald. His shot's blocked straight off Carew. Ricochets into the corner, and the Eagles back on it with Marshall Warren, sophomore defenseman who will get a ton of ice time along with his classmate Drew Hellison. Here's Danny Waite, his first shift as an Eagle. His shot's canceled out. Comes down to Carew. Rister is blocked. Well done by Lyndon Alger, the freshman defenseman from Centerville, Massachusetts. Alger goes hard, knocking Carew down face first into the ice. Wake keeps it alive along the dasher board, trying to get it in deep toward Jack McBain, who's just rotated out onto the ice. McBain slides it across. Warren settling. Rister into the corner. Here's McBain again. First line center, an NHL draft pick a couple of years back in the Minnesota Wild. Throwing it in front, looking for Nestorenko. It skitters away, and it's cleared toward the UMass bench. Four minutes of wide open hockey. Yeah, in the midst of a change there, Bill, they went from their fourth line to their first line during that sequence. Huts go in front. Here's McBain. He's tied up. And at the end, Matt Murray will dive on top of it. Strong defense in front from the back-checking forward, Garrett Wade. Check in on Spencer Knight at the other end. This was the opportunity for UMass, which is the only official shot registered so far. Good look by Del Geizo sliding across. And Knight, whose positioning is so good, his fundamental so sound. When you talk to folks around this league who watch and evaluate how to try to beat Spencer Knight, they're always so impressed with his movement from post to post. And that's the task for UMass to try to beat here today. Another good season last year for Greg Carvel and company, and it really feels like they're at the point now where this was not just a flash in the pan. They lost John Leonard and Mitchell Chafee. There's a lot of debate on whether or not those two would have been back in a normal season. Both would have been seen years this year. Remember, this UMass team just two years removed from their NCAA runner-up finish, led by Kobe Baker winner and now one of the top players in the NHL, Kale McCarr. Here's Matthew Kessel to the outside. Long stretch pass forward, looking for Chow, redirected in on Knight. Knight always apt to play the puck out of his own net, knocks it forward to Nesterenko, a freshman who was drafted by the Minnesota Wild this year. Logan Hutsko, BC senior, wrist shot deflected. Felix got in the way. Comes back around, McBain wrapping it in front, and ricochets around. It comes to Mike Hardman. Eagles will reset Eamon Powell, the freshman defenseman for Marcellus, New York. Freshman that's going to be thrust into a pretty big role. BC is young and not all that deep on defense. Experienced and very deep at the forward position. Yeah, defense is going to be the big question this year. Where does BC find those fifth and sixth guys? Michael Caro is the one senior back. He basically was the extra defenseman a year ago. We have our first penalty coming. And it was in the offensive end, but going on UMass, the Minutemen, an offensive zone penalty, which will send Boston College to the power play. Let's take a look at the call here, and I think it's right there. And yep, indeed, 
cross-checking on Colin Felix. Yes, they get Felix, and that was a tough spot to take a penalty for UMass, and it gives the Eagles power play an opportunity early on in the game. Felt like those last couple of shifts, things started to swing a little bit more in front of Matt Murray and goal for UMass, and BC will start on the power play. Interesting, McLaughlin will start in center. Penalties did not burn UMass last week, but they could have. Took 12 penalties in the two games against UConn, but did not allow a power play goal. So cross-checking on Felix, an early face-off win from Josh Lapita allows UMass to clear. So this Boston College power play alignment has Hardman, McLaughlin, Hutsko, Ellison, and Boldy. So four forwards, Ellison, the lone defenseman. The captain, McLaughlin, looking to get it up to Ellison, and Bobby Trevino takes it away. Trevino into the offense, then flutters one high over the top of Spencer Knight. Be interesting on the BC power play. Of course, you remember last year in terms of the seniors that depart, how good Julius Montala and David Cotton were on the power play and what that did for BC, who replaces those guys up front. And don't forget their top two offensive-minded defensemen, at least on the power play, Jesper Matula and Ben Finkelstein as well. There's Matt Boldy, who finished so strong last year. He was snake bit for the first 15 games of his college career, but ended this season the second hottest player in the country behind his line mate, Alex Newhook. It was always a situation where it was never for lack of shots with Boldy. He led Hockey East rookies with shots through the entire season. But that back half of the year, they started to go in at a shockingly high rate. Boldy first round pick of the Wild last year, but here's a turnover the other way to Jake Gaudet, the UMass captain, coming in on Eamon Powell, and Powell knifes it away from Gaudet into the corner. Sloppy start to the power play for Boston College. Just 50 seconds left on their opening man advantage of the season and not one shot to show for it. You do feel like the penalty kill is where UMass really shows what its core DNA is under Greg Carville. Such a physical, tough team. They really rely on that, and especially this year when he's talking about winning games 3-2, you have to be strong on the penalty kill and not allow your opponent to get a jump start on the power play. Kuntar and McBain, two of the forwards on this second unit, joined by Colby Ambrosio, the defenseman Powell and Warren. Here's Ambrosio working his way around McBain and sends it back to Michael Caro with just 10 seconds left on the Boston College power play. It, it might be worth noting, maybe the most bizarre part of last year for Boston College was when they went on their undefeated streak nine in a row to end the year. Their power play was just two of 24, so it was not a strong power play at the end of the year, even though they were winning because they were playing better five-on-five -five hockey than anyone else in the country. Into the offensive end, Josh Lapino wrists it wide, blocked off senior Michael Caro's stick. Lapino, a freshman from Minanka, Illinois, part of a number of good freshman forwards who will be asked to do some scoring. Oliver McDonald, another freshman that UMass is counting on to provide some offense on that third line. Lapina playing the point. Here's a rip from Kessel that's blocked away by Spencer Knight. Matthew Kessel sent that one through traffic. When you play UMass, you expect shots from the blue line. They have had one of the top scoring blue lines since Cal McCarroll really stepped on campus a few years ago. Yeah, Greg Carville really likes what he saw out of Matthew Kessel as a Blues draft pick last season and expecting big things from him once again. No score early on in Boston. We have the best teams in the country in our league. It gets your team better, and it gets your team ready to win national championships. Every night is a challenge with emphasis on every. But the players don't realize this. They make the coaches even better. Whatever school you're bringing in, unbelievable players. And they kind of make each other better. With players that are All-Americans, that are Kazmaier winners, I mean, it's amazing that we have so much talent in our league. Any good league has to have great players. We've got a lot of great players amongst the 11 teams. It makes the league premier league in college hockey. Boston College Eagle fans, when it's time for a new ride, soar to the McGovern Auto Group, a proud supporter of Boston College with over 5,000 quality vehicles to fit your lifestyle and budget. 92 Boston College alum Matt McGovern has built Boston's fastest growing automotive group with 14 family dealerships across the Boston Metro. Find the vehicle you're looking for and join your fellow Eagles, Matt McGovern, Mark Walker, Christine Hyde, and Tom Gilgariff at McGovern Auto Group. Visit them online at mcgovernauto.com and go Eagles! 
Well, before today's game here in Boston and across the league in hockey, East, a moment of silence for Travis Roy, who played at Boston University, suffered a spinal injury, and then was such an advocate for spinal research. Travis passed away in the last month, and uh, the, the folks around Hockey East all really felt like he was part of the community. Even if you were a rival at Boston University like BC, the advocate that he was and, and the way he stayed involved with the league even after his days at BU. Boston College at the offensive end were just underway, played about eight minutes. Eagles and Minutemen, the two top teams in the preseason Hockey East poll. Boston College picked first, UMass picked second. That is a hand pass against Drew Hellison, who basically played volleyball, jumping over the top of Cal Kefuk there. Yeah, that was a reach from Hellison, who Jerry York is really excited about what this year is an opportunity to bring as he takes that jump from freshman to sophomore status. But just kind of reaching out, he uses his big frame and got caught up. Mentioned Alex Newhook is already off with Team Canada for World Juniors. Ellison, one of a number of players hoping to make the U.S. squad along with Spencer Knight and Marshall Warren and Matt Boldy. BC could have four players representing them, maybe even five at World Juniors in late December and early January. Here's Mike Hardman on his own end going down. He just kind of flicks it out to center where it ends up with John Fresco Cassaro. Cassaro, the sophomore defenseman, playing his first game of the year after the injury to Mark Del Geizo, and this is icing against Boston College. Cassaro played 30 games last year, but there's a good freshman defenseman like Aaron Bollinger and Lyndon Alger who seem to bump him out of the rotation before the injury last week at the end of the game against UConn for Del Geizo. Yeah, Aaron Bollinger's guys that Craig Carville said in our call this week, he was really impressed with how he played in his first weekend as a collegiate player against UConn. Puck comes back to Kessel. Flicks it down low, Trevino centering feed, and it's chopped over the bar by Lopina up into the netting. Good last gasp on defense from Hellison there. These are the kinds of play this that Jerry York is looking for out of his sophomore defense pairing. As we said, Michael Carroll comes back as a senior. Everybody else is an underclassman on defense, and you even saw in there Gentry Schamberger, who is by nature of forward who's going to get some time on the blue line. Knight makes the safe big rebound skitter just past Oliver McDonald had a gaping net if he could have gotten to it. Generally one of the things Spencer Knight is known to be so good at is rebound control. He left a big one there. Junior Patrick Giles into the offensive end throws one from the odd angle offside netting poked in front still loose in the slot now taken away by Trevino. Good job there by Josh Lopina to come in and take McLaughlin out of the play, preventing an opening in front. Here's Trevino charging down the shoot. Penalty coming as Knight makes the save on Trevino, but a slash on Michael Caro sends UMass to the power play for the first time. Seen a lot of Bobby Trevino so far using his speed to try to get in behind this Boston College defense. And he helps draw a penalty there and he'll send UMass to the power play. Again, you just get caught behind. Nothing to do but reach and that leads to the penalty. And he'll send UMass to the power play for the first time on the slash. It's a slashing call on Caro. UMass was great on the power play last week at UConn. Three goals in 11 tries. Part of a 1-0-1 weekend against the Huskies. UMass did not score on the power play against Boston College last year when the Eagles went 2-1 against the Minutemen. A rip from Zach Jones goes wide and it's cleared all the way down the ice. BC's power play got up and down remarks in the season. The penalty kill, though, got better and better as the year went on and was just outstanding during that run down the stretch of the season. Yeah, really, really strong at the end of the year. And also, the penalty kill and a lot of shorthanded goals for Boston College which led the nation in that category by a wide margin. Yeah, 11 shorthanded goals last season for Boston College in 34 games. 40 seconds gone on the penalty on Caro. Jones holds, sends it through, redirected off the stick of Lebster and into the corner. Chow feeds Lebster. Now Oliver Chow as it goes through his wickets and forces UMass to retreat. Eagles sneak three fresh bodies onto the ice. Trevino is in. Fluttering shot is sticked away by Knight into the corner. Boston College clears again. Logan Hutzko will head off the ice. And even when at last year in the beginning of the year, the penalty kill, maybe the numbers weren't exactly where BC wanted, those shorthanded goals helped kind of equalize things a little bit. So maybe the percentage wasn't there, but if you looked at net goals, BC was pretty solid all year long. We got another quick whistle and penalty coming here. And this time it's on UMass. 
The Minutemen caught with too many men on the ice in the midst of that change after Hardman banged the puck right into traffic. So Jerry Harding will go serve it, and that cancels out the Boston College penalty kill in the UMass power play. Yeah, that's true. So for UMass so far, it's a penalty taken in the offensive zone and a too many men on the power play. So a little bit of early season kinks still to work out there, but opportunity here with the four on four. Four on four for 51 seconds. Puck back to Marshall Warren. Warren, Powell, Boldy, and Hardman, the four for Boston College. Warren up top, slides it across to Powell. Rister through traffic, redirected, and trickles just wide of Murray. He got just enough to keep it out. Jake got at the captain, leads it off for Colin Felix. Full head of steam, Felix is impeded by Powell, and the puck skips into the corner. Comes around to Warren, sophomore defenseman, drafted by the Wild in the sixth round. There are four Minnesota Wild draft picks on this Boston College roster. Laganoff slams on the brakes, improves his angle, rests it on Knight, and it's a glove save. Boy, Laganov just made something out of nothing there. Yeah, good positioning by Knight to make that save. Let's go back to the other end. It went through the legs first of Bollinger, and then I'm not sure Murray knew where it was. And then again, how about Spencer Knight? Could you be as smooth as that in goal? Perfect positioning and grabs it with the glove. But that was created by Laganov just to make something out of that when he was in the corner and improve his angle. Another person who's being asked to really step into a big role. Top line center for a guy who scored just one goal last year, but UMass needs to find scoring from lots of different spots. Ambrosio wrists one high over the crossbar. Comes back to Hellison straight away. Boston College now on the power play for the second time today. An abbreviated power play for the Eagles, who had just one shot on their opening power play. Hellison's wrister skips down in front. It's cleared. Matthew Kessel got to it first and knocks it down the ice. Boston College will regroup. It's the second power play unit again for the Eagles. The freshman Ambrosio and Kuntar at the forward positions, along with Jack McBain. Trevor Kuntar, a Boston Bruins third-round draft pick this year, originally committed to Harvard. A late change to Boston College this summer and a big addition for the, the Eagles when they needed extra scoring depth. Yeah, and Boston College was really excited to get him. Wasn't really recruited by BC in his initial commitment, but really fell in love with the program quickly and excited to be here. Powell on angle, wrists it on, bounces off the side of the net. Now Zach Jones on top of it, just three seconds left on the power play. Minutemen trying to take advantage, but the Eagles send defensemen back and cancel out any type of breakout opportunity. Seven minutes to go in the opening period. Warren centers it, looking for Harrison Roy. It goes off his stick into the corner. Roy, another freshman out of Lakeville, Massachusetts. This pass into the corner ends up with Danny Waits. You think of the weight name in hockey, you probably think of Doug. That's his dad who played nearly two decades in the NHL. This is icing on the Eagles to stop play with 6.45 to go in the opening period. Danny's dad, Doug, 19 years in the NHL, a lot of them with the Edmonton Oilers, more than a 1,000 career points. Yeah, U.S. Hockey Hall of Famer, a spot where Jerry York will join him come next December. Which begs the question, how is Jerry York not already in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, in the overall Hockey Hall of Fame? But they'll write that wrong this year, as that's an offside whistle on UMass, and it brings us to a timeout on the ice. 6.41 to go in the first period. B.C. and UMass knotted up at nothing. This is Jack Eichel, former Boston University Terrier. Jack Eichel! I played college hockey, as did 80% of the Americans in the NHL. Whether you're a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. How do we break free from that same old song that is healthcare? There are so many things to fine tune, but if we dare to throw away the status quo and we find a better way, it will sound and look different. And most of all, healthcare will finally feel different. Some will think it can't be done, and that's okay, because we do it for you. 
And all who believe there can be a better way. Debut for Boston College. We mentioned this year the question mark for the Eagles is on defense where they graduated a lot from last year. Only Michael Carroll with years of experience. Then those three sophomores, Warren, Hellison, and Andrus, have limited experience. Big boost, adding Brooks Orpik to the coaching staff after a long career in the NHL. Brooks is the volunteer assistant with the team this year, and Jerry said he's never had a volunteer assistant be able to make every practice until Brooks Orpik. Yeah, it's kind of worked out because Brooks just retiring from the NHL a couple of years ago, so he's got time, lives down the road, and he's really been a help. Logan Hutzko in the corner chasing after the loose puck. Top line for the Eagles, it's Hutzko out there with Nestorenko and McBain. Let's go. Drops it. Nestorinko shot save. Rebound is denied. Murray coming out to shut down the freshman. This is a great read by the senior goaltender, Matt Murray. He jumps on this, understanding once he gave up the rebound that he was going to have to shift in position, started to move before Nestorenko even got to that puck for the second effort. Really good job by the senior goaltender. And there's a real reason why both Murray and Lindbergh play. It's because they're both so good. There's no separation between those two netminders who are first and third all-time in save percentage and goals against average at UMass. Warren first to the loose puck in his own end knocks it forward here's Patrick Giles finally healthy after a year where he saw injury after injury really slow him down last season Kuntar flips forward to the junior captain Mark McLaughlin giving chase to Kessel McLaughlin all over Kessel comes back to Hellison forced the turnover Warren blast redirected high over the crossbar Warren has it again Wristing into the corner, skitters away from Kuntar and up top to Hellison. Kuntar backhanded flip, looking for McLaughlin. Now here's Matt Boldy just onto the ice, chasing it into the corner. Hellison down low for Boldy, first round pick in last year's draft. Minnesota Wild took him 17th overall. Hellison goes over the back of the defenseman Del Geizo. Rolls around to Anthony Del Geizo, charging forward, working his way at Hellison. Puck ricochets back to Del Geizo again into the offensive zone. Anthony Del Geizo, three years ago, the top player in the USHL, scoring 85 points in just a season, looking to consistently get things going at the college level. He's been in and out of the lineup a lot in his career. Up top, Alger shots blocked. Comes back around, ends up with Colby Ambrosio at center ice. Ambrosio turns it over to Eric Faith. Reed Lebster at Knight goes hard into him, and Knight keeps it out, holding on to the post. Alger has it again. Rister on, and Knight knocks it away once more. And now we have a whistle as Lebster's slow to get up. Good help defense that time by Drew Hellison coming across on the opportunity. Both teams with chances early here. Hockey East, two top ten teams. Down hard into the side of the net as he was attacking Spencer Knight. Yeah, just a tough angle here. You see him coming in against the freshman Powell and then gets kind of stuck between Knight and that post. So certainly hoping for the best for that young man being helped off the ice. Lebster, sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Second line last week. Lines have moved around a bit for Greg Carvel. His group is on the third line today, but he's a key part of the penalty kill as well for UMass, so they'll hope to get him back out there. Logan Hutzko working it wide to Jack McBain. Centering feed for Nestorenko. Trickles to Hutzko and then slips away. Was well defended by John Franco Casero. That line for BC is going to be really interesting this year. Because you have Hutzko, who spent the last two years playing with Montel and Cotton. Hutzko inside Nestorenko and McBain scores! Jack McBain puts it home. And the Eagles are on the board. It's that line you were talking about. Eric, a freshman, a junior, and a senior combining for the Eagles' first goal. Well, Jerry York said that Jack McBain's kind of going to be this year's David Cotton for Logan Hutzko on that line, and how about that to get started? The speed of Hutzko to get in the zone, he's so good at progressing past the opponent's defense, and that time the big body of McBain making that jump to his junior-senior year playing up on the top line. 
Hard work by that first unit for Boston College to get the lead first. McBain the goal, the assist to Hutzko after six goals in his sophomore season. McBain scores in the opener for the Eagles. We talked to Logan Hutzko about how he'd really only played with Julius Mantel and David Cotton the last couple of years and what it was like to gel with a new line. He said, hey, I'm playing with guys who are great and they find me in good spots. He, he was really excited about the new pairing as well. Keyfield looking to answer. Knight fights it off. Spencer Knight's eighth save of this opening period. Jones bouncing through, and it got to Knight, who makes his ninth save. Here's Jones again, sending it across to Kessel. Jones, Rister through traffic, down in front, skipping to Keyfield. He puts it on, it's a high stick. Nice response here for UMass coming out of the goal to pepper some shots on Spencer Knight, but he was equal to all of them. One opportunity right there, and then a really good job settling that puck right in front of the net, but just played with a high stick, as you said. Again, when your positioning is so good, as is Spencer Knight's, it makes it really difficult to find ways to beat him. Last year, it was kind of that tic-tac-toe passing at times early in the year, but at the end of that season, during the nine-game unbeaten, Eaton Street, he was as good as anyone in the country. Remember, he didn't allow three goals during that stretch except for once in a game he made 47 saves. Garrett Wait, Rister Knight kicks it off. There's his 10th save for those being introduced to Spencer Knight tonight. Sophomore from Darien, Connecticut. First round Panthers pick two years back and expected to be an absolute star at the next level. Here's Garrett Wait sliding one forward and rolls to Marshall Warren. And the offense been Hardman had Ambrosio making a cut, left it back for Boldy instead. Comes to Hardman behind goal. Hardman going down, javelins it up to Marshall Warren. Now Warren looping around the defenseman, taken down to the ice, no penalty as Jerry Harding stripped him clean. Harding working ahead, slams on the brakes and makes it snow in the corner. Del Geizo looping it along the dashers toward Faith. Now Harding pinching in, keeps it alive. Straight away, Felix Rister flutters wide, takes a live bounce to Faith. Eric Faith still holding on, sophomore from Carp, Ontario. Del Geizo centers, Faith jabs at it, it pops up into the air. Boldy trying to clear it, still whacking at it. Del Geizo holds it in momentarily, it's eventually spilled away to Danny Waite, and he breaks the zone to Colby Ambrosio. Ambrosio got tied up, and that is a penalty. Oliver McDonald is heading off as he had Ambrosio's left arm. Well, UMass with a pretty good surge after allowing the goal, and then you get right here on the holding call, and it was at the very end of it. You can see the official is right on it, right in his sight line making that call, and McDonald at the end, it was just a second or two too long holding on to the arm there and Boston College will go on the power play and UMass was not thrilled with the call. To Oliver McDonald's defense it did look like Ambrosio once he realized he was tied up maybe reached in and, and kept his arm there a bit longer. A wrister from Boldy bounces to McLaughlin. Now it's Boldy sending it down to Hartman. Boldy up top has it bounce off his stick. Slides it. Ellison keeps it moving. Hutsko. Stick handles there at the dot. Hutsko snaps and Murray gloves it. This top unit for Boston College, four forwards, Hardman, McLaughlin, Hutsko, and Boldy, who's playing on the blue line, and just the one defenseman, Drew Hellison. Only switch you'll likely see when Alex Newhook comes back with the new hook taking McLaughlin's spot at the center, and Mark probably bouncing down to the second line. Junior captain, tremendous leader, and known as one of the best defensive-minded forwards in Hockey East. Pretty impressive young man to get junior captain, and that's not something that happens a lot around the Heights. But Jerry Eric said even last year as a sophomore, he got a couple of votes for captain. That's how much he's thought of in the room. Puck almost trickled to Hardman. It's banged all the way around. Colin Felix clears it. So 30 seconds gone on the power play for Boston College after the holding call against Oliver McDonald. BC 0 for 2 on the power play here early. UMass has continued to take a ton of penalties this season. Now through seven periods of hockey, 15 penalties assessed to the minute. 
Let's go in front. Ball, the extra pass from McLaughlin. Centering for Hartman, and he fans on it. Well, had a really good passing. Maybe one too many in that sequence, but looked good doing it. That is icing on the Eagles on the power play and backs them up in their own end inside the final minute of this first period. Get some really good looks here coming across. Boldy looking across for McLaughlin. He overskates it, trying to come back to Hardman then to make up for it. This power play unit starting to work together in their first real crack at it. You feel like they're both Boldy and McLaughlin got caught at odd angles on their off hands, and neither could pull the trigger, and that's why you saw those extra passes. Final 40 seconds of the opening period. Boston College leading 1-0 on Jack McBain's goal to open the scoring register for the Eagles. Ranked second in the nation behind North Dakota here at the start of the year. Huts go down in the corner, working around Jones, who wins that puck battle, and Kessel just tomahawks it down the ice. Time for one more rush for the Eagles. Warren with speed in over the blue line. Puck is banged away from him. Well done by Aaron Bollinger, the skilled freshman blue liner. And that's that for period one. A lot of open ice. 21 combined shots as we went back and forth. One goal. Jack McBain scores for Boston College off the assist from Logan Hutsko, and it's 1-0 Eagles after one. I'm sure who just missed out at the nine spot, even though New Hampshire had four ranked wins against hockey's teams a year ago. So uh, it was really tight all the way through and no reason to expect much different this year. We start the second period with Boston College still in the power play for 17 seconds. Oliver McDonald went off on the hold. Shots in that first period were officially 11-9 UMass, so 11 Spencer Knight saves, 8 for Philip Lindbergh. And on that Jack McBain goal, along with the assist for Logan Hutzko, Eamon Powell, the freshman credited with an assist. Second period with Boston College still in the power play for 17 seconds. Oliver McDonald went off on the hold. Shots in that first period were officially 11-9 UMass, so 11 Spencer Knight saves, 8 for Philip Lindbergh. And on that Jack McBain goal, along with the assist for Logan Hutzko, Eamon Powell. Well, the freshman credited with an assist, so a first career point in his first period of college hockey. Again, it's Boston College in the white. It's UMass in the maroon with Eric Galanti. I am Bill Spaulding. We miss you here in the building. We'll say that all winter long, but we are so glad that you are spending some time with us and hope we can bring the hockey energy and the excitement to you to help you make it through this winter happy, safe, and sound so you can be back here with us again next season. like there may be an issue with the door where the Zamboni comes out from. Officials are over there right now. Could be an ice soft spot as well. They're going to the main out from. Officials are over there right now. Could be an ice soft spot as well. They're going to the maintenance crew and they're going to get things looked at here. This is the second game of the day on the ice here at the Conti Forum. The women's hockey Boston College squad fell to Providence 3-2 earlier today in a game that he also saw on Nesson. Remember, as we get started here, BC is going to start on a mini power play of 17 seconds. And, you know, I think you talk about that first period, Bill. You look at UMass, did some good things. Really impressed with Trevino's ability to get in behind the BC defense and create some things in front of Spencer Knight. But you have to imagine for Greg Carville, the conversation was, can't take offensive zone penalties, and we can't take penalties on the power play. And that was two of the penalties that UMass ended up taking. So that's probably the message there for the Minutemen who are playing their third game of the season. And yeah, indeed, it looks like something in front of Matt Murray's net. Yeah, soft spot at. in front of that goal. Looks like they're gonna get some snow over there to try and see if they can fill that soft spot in. So the uh, Maintenance crew will go to work, and let's take a look back at that game that was earlier today, Boston College and Providence, as the Eagles got off to a 1-0 lead. Yeah, it was a really impressive performance by the Providence Friar. This was another game that was kind of scheduled leading up into the week, two teams who were supposed to play against other teams coming together. Pretty impressed with what Matt Kelly has done in his three seasons at Providence. They put together a heck of an effort holding on to a 3-2 victory over the Eagles. Yeah, if you're just joining us, Boston College opening its season. UMass played last week a win and a tie against UConn for the Minutemen. Boston College picked first in the preseason hockey's poll. 
UMass was picked second. These were the two teams at the top of the conference after last year as well. Two years ago, UMass an NCAA finalist. Last year, Boston College was one of the trendy picks to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament before it was stopped. And while the Eagles lost 11 players to graduation, they're still one of the trendy picks in the country because they returned so much as well. Yeah, this was the rankings and the national rankings. How about the week that Michigan put together so far this year? There's been a lot of Big Ten games, and Michigan's freshman class has burst down to the speed like seen like gangbusters so far. But, you know, you, you look at where Boston College is, I think that speaks a lot to what their freshman class did last year, what they expect that class to develop into as sophomores. It's not often that you lose a senior class like BC did, losing 11 guys and yet still being picked second nationally in the preseason poll. I know the games are all over the place, but you mentioned that Michigan team. They've been crushing teams. Three of the top six scorers in the country right now mm -hmm. are freshmen on that Michigan roster. Folks around college hockey have said for a long time, Michigan has a little bit of a built-in advantage because the U.S. U18 national team actually lives and trains in Ann Arbor, so they get a lot of great young players. Maybe this is the year where they finally yeah. put that together and it translates into a deep run in the NCAA tournament. We are underway in the second period. That's an important face-off win because it basically allows UMass to kill off those final 15 seconds of the penalty to Oliver McDonald. With five seconds left on the Eagle power play, Boston College starts forward with Drew Hellison dumping it in. The Eagles with dumping chase, sending freshman Nikito Nestorenko after it. Rare college hockey player from Coney Island, New York. He is the son of parents who immigrated to the U.S. from Russia, grew up in Coney Island, but got his love of hockey from his family and... Uh, here he is at Boston College in his first year with the Eagles. That's a long stretch pass from Trevino. Came up empty and with McDonald out of the box now. That's icing. You see Marshall Warren of Boston College, one of the sophomore defensemen who has moved into a, a focal role as one of the top two D-men for Boston College. Jerry York said basically Marshall Warren and Drew Hellison are going to see it, just a ton of ice time this year. Yeah, everything we're talking about with the Boston College defense and what it needs to be, it relies on that group being a top pairing. Wrist shot on goal, and it's an easy save for Matt Murray as he gloved that boldy wrister. Really important for those two guys to take that jump that you would expect of players from their freshman year to their sophomore year to take. You know, Marshall Warren, someone that Jerry York talked glowingly about in everything that went on during the racial unrest during this summer and the way that Warren spoke on it, Jerry York was so impressed. Arrow rips it wide. Yeah, Jerry York said that Marshall Warren's probably a future captain for Boston College. Very open about everything he was feeling this summer and a vocal leader of this team. Heck of a hockey player as well. He was plus 22 last year. Oh, Murray scoops up that skipping puck after Colby Ambrosio threw it on goal. Maybe a future senator also, Jerry York told us in his expectation of Marshall Warren. Here's Caro getting a nice jump in Ambrosio, who we've seen some good things from that young man so far in his freshman year. Another one of these guys that Jerry York seems like he has all the time. Maybe a little bit undersized, but has first round skill. So maybe dropped a little in the draft because of the size, but he feels like they can develop that skill. They have certainly done that through the years here at Boston College. Matt Boldy wins the faceoff and draws a penalty. Delayed call coming. Knight comes out of the net. Extra attacker for Boston College. Caro has it hop off his stick and that'll allow Carson Jasevich to touch it up for UMass. This is the fourth power play already today for Boston College. So the penalty's starting to add up at this point. And again, that's all about Boldy off of the face-off win, looking him jutting in and not exactly sure where the penalty call came from there. I'm sure we saw it on that replay. It was Jasevich slashing in right after the Boldy faceoff win. So Jasevich is off, fourth different UMass player to pick up a penalty, and now that's 16 Minutemen penalties in seven periods, excuse me, in, uh, yes, seven periods plus two minutes of hockey so far this year. UMass thought that might have been tipped on the way out, and the faceoff should have come out, but the officials will leave the face off to the left of Matt Murray. Boy, Greg Carvel has been on the official since early in the first period. He can hear everything in here when there aren't fans around, and he is really frustrated right now. So far, though, this UMass penalty kill has been perfect this year. 15 for 15, including 3 for 3 today. 20 seconds gone on the Jasevich slashing penalty. 
This is Hutsko charging forward. Logan Hutsko plays it off the dashers, looking for Matt Boldy. First round pick of the Minnesota Wild last year. Boldy has it again, works it up to the blue line. Hellison down for Boldy, missed him, and it comes away. Here's a chance for Zach Jones, 1v1 with Hellison. Jones pulls the trigger and scores! Zach Jones beats Spencer Knight, glove side, and a shorthanded goal levels the score. Well, Jones had help here coming down the right wing, and I think Spencer Knight might have thought that there was a pass coming here. Jones, though, looking at it all the way. Watch the eyes of Jones. He's looking across, looking across, and then just decides to snipe it over the left shoulder of Spencer Knight. Heck of a shot there by the New York Rangers draft pick. And what a job by UMass. Ton of penalties in this game. Going on the penalty kill once again to tie the game right there. Second goal already this year for Jones. We told you the Minutemen expect scoring from their blue line. They got 21 goals from the defenseman last year. Already three this season through two and a half games for the Minutemen. Still a minute left on the Boston College power play. Warren forward for Eamon Powell. He's in onside. Ambrosio, McBain, and Kuntar are the forwards for the Eagles. Warren throws it through traffic, deflected by McBain, and Murray fights it off. Bobby Trevino into the offensive end, 1v4 for UMass. Deftly loops it into the corner, now he's killing time there. Puck dribbles away, and Warren starts it forward. Half a minute to go on Boston College's fourth power play today. Right now, the Eagles are minus one on the man advantage. Have not scored, and they've given up this shorthanded goal. Yeah, another look at it here from Zach Jones. Really good work with his eyes, just staring down and where it looked like that pass was going to come. You would expect it from a defenseman, and then just decides he's got a shot and beats Knight Glove side. Well, early on, power play issues for Boston College, and again, this UMass penalty kill is looking like gangbusters through three games. Just 20 seconds or so away from 16 for 16 on the penalty kill. Eric, what are they doing so well down a man? Well, as you can see with Boston College, they're forcing the passes to just be a hair late. So everything that BC's trying to do, UMass is getting in those passing lanes. So even when it seems like BC's putting together a lot of passes in a row, everything's a hair late. We saw that tic-tac-toe play on the other end where it felt like Boldy just a hair late. That's all developed by what UMass is doing on the penalty kill. Final 12 seconds of the power play. This is Boldy with a full head of steam. He's deep into the corner, delays. Boldy looking for an option. All the way up to Hellison. It's slid along to Hutsko. Across Boldy, extra pass. Hartman, backhander, score! Mike Hartman slides it home. BC back on top. Well, this time, you see the work right in front, and this is Hardman just using his big body in front after receiving the pass from Boldy and just working with the back man. Murray sliding across and just could not get the pad down to the ice in time. Hardman goes five hole, and the Eagles with a very quick answer on the power play. Those two combined for so much offense late this season last year. Mike Hardman and Matt Boldy, they combine again. Boldy's first assist of the year. Mike Hardman's first goal after 12 goals in his freshman season. BC leads 2-1 in what has become an action-packed second period here at the Conti Forum. Felix flips it in deep for UMass. Damon Powell taken down behind his own net, turns it over. Del Geiso centers. Knight makes this save on a great chance for Jerry Harding. Knight had to be ready on that quick change of possession. Yeah, UMass had faith right in front of the net. Knight got out with his stick to knock the puck away. Josh Lapina plays it deep for Del Geiso. On the side door, Knight the save gets taken down. Puck still loose. Del Geiso ended up right in Knight's kitchen. Michael Caro had to come in and get that puck out. It was tonight's left. He was looking to his right for the puck behind the net, but it was behind him. Here's Lapina stepping in with space, pulls the trigger, and Knight gloves it, calming down what was a bit of a itchy sequence for Spencer Knight. You look at the work here, starting with Faith coming in behind the net, forcing the freshman Powell off the 
puck and it created that chance right there with Faith crashing in but Knight steering that puck aside out of harm's way. Steering is the perfect word again that's something that Spencer Knight is really good at his rebounds are put in specific spots with a purpose. Boston College has that third line out there. Ambrosio plays it back through Hellison. Here comes Matt Boldy now forward. Boldy on the left side. Delay, shoot, save. Murray was able to squeeze it into his side as Boldy tried to short side him. Well, again, Boldy looking all the way there. Thinks he can beat him again towards that blocker, but a good job by Murray. Good positioning, just not leaving any room against that post. This second period has been played at a tempo that you would say favors Boston College. It has not been a physical, tight checking period. It's been back and forth. Not to say there haven't been some hits in this second period, but but the pace and the openness is the way the Eagles want to play. I mean, that's exactly what you, you would certainly expect. And again, with UMass certainly relying on their defense, you don't want those open ice opportunities. This is Laganov, the center of the first line for UMass out there with Garrett Waite and Oliver Chow. Kessel shot blocked. Rebound down. Waite threw it on, and Knight blocks it into the corner. Boldy clears it. Hardman in a foot race with Kessel, and that waves off the icing. Kessel nearly spilled it, comes back to him on the bounces. Ambrosio pressures him on the forecheck. Chow watches it skip by him and roll all the way down to Eamon Powell. Right back to him. Powell, one of those young 18-year-old freshmen on this Eagle roster. BC, even though balanced on experience, young in terms of age, most of their sophomores aren't even 20 years old yet. Good chance in front. Patrick Giles rips it over the crossbar after he muscled his way in. Terry York has talked a lot about what he's seen out of Patrick Giles. Giles centering from McLaughlin. It's put over the crossbar. And you're seeing it today with the effort that he's made in the jump after an injury plague season. Kuntar rips it off a of body. It skips off Zach Jones and into the corner. Straight away Powell. Jones blocks another one and then clears it out. This will be icing on the Minutemen who were in desperate need of a change after a long shift. UMass was looking for a tip. Let's go back to this look against Spencer Knight. Look how many guys are in front here. One, two, three guys. Even after the look in front, you still for UMass had Laganoff right in front looking for a rebound try. It's really taken a lot of effort for Spencer Knight and that word steering that we talked about getting his stick on it, angling it aside, even though UMass is crashing a lot of bodies in front, making it difficult. You got tired legs out there for the Minutemen now at the end of a long shift. Boston College has put a fresh top line out with Nestorenko, McBain, and Hutzko. The Eagles win the draw. Shot from the points, fought off by Murray as Drew Hellison threw it through some bodies. This will once again be icing on the Minutemen who are still unable to change. And you wonder if Greg Carvel starts to think about that timeout. It's still certainly earlier than you would want to take it, but now you're in a situation where you get a second face off. You must take as long as they can to skate into position. Top line stays out for Boston College. They're still fresh. McBain again wins the draw. Nesterenko's wrister's blocked out. Hutz goes first to it. Opportunity for a big shift in momentum here for Boston College with the tired legs from UMass. Caro keeps it alive. In deep, McBain. Using his speed to loop it around. Caro straight away blasts it. Murray blockers it into the corner. Cacero needs that clearance, flips it up high, and this should be enough to allow UMass to at least make a partial change. And here's the rest of the dump in. Five fresh bodies over the boards for the Minutemen. Really good work there by UMass to get through that sequence and get off the ice. Here's Hutzko surging. Rister is denied. Murray got it with his shoulder. He's made some big saves this period. With speed, Anthony Del Gaizo in. Passes in front. No, oh, Faith couldn't pull the trigger. He got tied up defensively as he was working on Harrison Roy. Yeah, I think that hit his skate bill and it angled underneath the pad of Spencer Knight. Nearly went in, ended up being just wide. 
And here comes Jerry Harding. This fourth line's been very good for UMass today as Knight turns away Del Geizo's chance. A lot of action early in the second period. Boston College up a goal. Track at home that UMass 16 for 16 on the penalty kill stays intact. But for all intents and purposes, it was a, a power play goal. It was the moment the penalty had released. So BC was still five on four at the time Hardman stuck at home. And you know, so much reason the first round picks Newhook and Boldy got so much attention last year playing together. But Mike Hardman, who has played with Alex Newhook all year long, Boldy moved onto that line at the end of the year. It was Hardman who actually had more goals than Boldy on the year. And he was a little bit older than the other freshmen coming in. He was a 19-year-old freshman last year versus the 17 and 18-year-old guys. So a little bit more playing experience coming in. And Jerry York thought that was a real strong compliment to playing with Alex Newhook a year ago. And again, in college hockey, that's more the norm than the exception. Generally, your freshmen are 19 or 20 years old and played some juniors. Boston College, one of those teams that's super talented, but generally on the younger side. And there's been at least somewhat of a shift over the last couple of years. Teams like Minnesota and Boston College realizing they needed some of those experienced freshmen as well. Knight gets taken down as he keeps it out after Kessel threw it on. Ended up with Lapina in his kitchen. Then bodies fly the other way. No penalty coming despite every right arm on the UMass bench being raised. Great play by Marshall Warren there to help out his goaltender and get that puck which was loose in front of an open net. Warren came over and sweeped it away. The Eagles work it forward to Ambrosio. Centering for Hartman, and it skips off a defensive stick. That was well done by Eric Faith again. Ambrosio and Rister save. Murray in the rebound. Skewed on by. Eric, this fourth line has seen a ton of ice time for UMass. It's Harding out there along with Faith and Del Geizo. They maybe have been the best line of the day, and they've drawn a penalty. The late call coming on Boston College. Here's a centering feed, and Knight makes the save on a charging Faith. Here's Lyndon Alger. Straight away Bollinger. Gary Harding, that could be another penalty, we will see. And here's the touch up. There will be at least one, and there could be a second, as it seemed like there might have been a hook late in that sequence. Well, just to go to the fourth line point, first of all, and, you know, Greg Carville told us when he was mentioning trying to find his depth of scoring this year, he really felt like maybe there's not a first line, but there was going to be an opportunity to play all four lines all the way through. And we're seeing that with what you've seen out of the fourth line. Here's the first penalty call that comes here. I'm sorry, this is the first opportunity earlier. And watch Warren come in right there and sweep that puck away from Spencer Knight. Then you start to get the penalties here to get things going, and Knight making an outstanding save with the delayed call on. It looks like just one penalty for now, so it'll be UMass yeah, on the power They play. didn't call that second hook that could have been called. Ambrosio for contact to the head roughing. Short-handed, here comes Boston College with Mark McLaughlin. Again, one of the best defensive forwards in college hockey, and he's at his best on the penalty kill. Good job by Oliver McDonald that time. Got the stick caught with McLaughlin, and he couldn't reach back and find a shot on that puck. This second power play for UMass, first one only lasted about a minute before UMass took a too many men on the ice penalty, so the minute been 0 for 1 so far today. Cal Keefield to the offensive end. UMass 3 for their first 12 on the power play this season. Lapina moves it into the corner. Felix had it, lost it, rolls back to Lapina. Trying to shoehorn it around the boards. There's Hutzko with speed, putting pressure on Keefield, who keeps possession. Centering for McDonald, it's under his stick, and out to center ice. So the Minutemen regroup, minute gone on the penalty against Ambrosio. Eagles will change after a Hellison dump. Midway through the season opener for Boston College, the third game for UMass is a 2-1 BC lead, a top two teams in the Hockey East preseason poll. Oliver Chow with space, rising wristers off the boards. Here's Bobby Trevino. This is the top unit out there for UMass. Jasevich has it played off his stick and out of play. He was out there with Trevino and Chow at the forward positions. Jones and Kessel, the defenseman on this unit for UMass. Unlike the NHL, where that would have been a penalty on BC for clearing it out on their own end, it's a legal play here. BC able to change, sends out McLaughlin, Giles, Hellison, and Warren, the top penalty killing unit for the Eagles. 
important faceoff here for McLaughlin and for Arbor Chow. McLaughlin wins it. He is really adept at winning faceoffs as well. Warren sends it all the way down the ice where Giles and Kessel give chase. Giles first to it, dashes it behind goal, just 15 seconds left on the power play. Warren plays it forward. Good move for McLaughlin, absorbs a big hit from Matthew Kessel and goes down. Really good job by UMass on its power play defending that blue line. They got a couple of hits in there on McLaughlin on some decent shorthanded chances. Back to even strength hockey, here's Chow again. Alger through traffic, bounces high on Trevino, spinning it in front through the slot, nobody home. Blake, Blake, Blake. Ellison slides it along. Now Boldy forward. Oh, there's a hard punching blow from Alger into the backside of Ambrosio. UMass bringing the, the physical play here in the second period as they try to stem the Boston College 2-1 lead. Ambrosio for checking, pressures Aldrew, clears it forward. This comes all the way in on Spencer Knight, looping it behind the Eamon Powell, young freshman, but a player that Jerry York thinks will be a key contributor on the back line this year. Hardman, back for Mitch Andrus, getting some ice time as the fifth defenseman today. Haven't seen much of Gentry Schamberger, the sixth defenseman, only a couple of shifts for the youngster from Atlanta. Boldy wins a puck battle, centers, Powell, Rister, save Murray, and no rebound. So Boston College absorbs the penalty for UMass, kills off a power play, and the score is 2-1 Eagles midway through the second. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies in simple to understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-555-1212. That's 800-555-1212. Well, as is par for the course for these two powerhouse programs, this year's NHL draft saw seven combined draft picks for these two teams. Trevor Kuntar, the Boston Bruins pick. You may see him playing on this network years down the road. Uh, the best draft pick in terms of the third round for Boston College. On the other side, Matthew Kessel already has an assist today. He was picked in this year's draft. And uh, one of four UMass players drafted this year. You, you take all the previous classes as well. And, I mean, we've got double-digit NHL talent on these two rosters. And, of course, guys that you see really go do it at the next level. Cal McCarr, last year's NHL Rookie of the Year, uh, had a great bubble with Colorado, taking them closer to the Stanley Cup. This is Philip Laganov in deep for UMass. Laganov centers all the way through the middle of the ice and down to center. It's really going to be amazing the amount of talent that you get to see this year. And some guys ended up leaving early for the pros because of the odd year, but a lot stuck behind. And there's quite a bit of talent. BC's second most draft picks only to BU in the country. Wait forward. Nesterenko takes it back. He has Jack McBain in. McBain stops, pops, and scores! Jack McBain, second today. Boston College by two. Well, there are some folks around the country calling for a breakout year out of this young man, and he is not disappointing so far. There's so much here even beyond the shot. First to control it, then to stop, and just deliver a miss 
Russell over the shoulder and Matt Murray. What a shot by Mitt Bain. What a game in his first playing on the top line for Boston College. He had six goals all of last season. He has scored twice today. Give freshman Nikito Nesterenko his first collegiate assist as he made that stretch pass to find McVean. I mean, obviously the shot's unbelievable, but even just to reach out for that pass using his length and then to control it and then stop and get the good opportunity. That was really well done by Jack McVean. So it's 3-1 Boston College, nation's number two team, with a little separation here. Ellison blasting through traffic, rebounds there as Kuntar was screening Murray. And nobody home to poke that rebound, and Puck is up into the Boston College bench. First of two between these two teams that we talked about. It's going to be home and homes all season long in hockey's play. Play tomorrow, 4.30 in Amherst. Nesson Plus will have the coverage of that one. What a way to start for BC. Second weekend here for UMass. And it's been two teams that have had some bad luck with who their opponents have been. Obviously, there's a number of teams still going through some things with trying to navigate how to play hockey in this pandemic. And a lot of folks putting a lot of hard work in. And the flexibility of all of these schools to say early in a week, let's see, just find a game and play and that's what everybody wants to accomplish here and try to get this season in here's danny wait fourth line out for boston college wait to roy in front murray makes a one-on-one -on -one save <laughs> nearly 4-1 but murray has come up big in a couple of clutch spots for umass here in this second period roy throws his body into bollinger puck comes into the corner Jake Gaudet, the UMass captain, part of the third line, trying to supply some energy here for the Minutemen. Down two goals for the first time. Jasevich finds the trailer. Here's a rip from Jones. It hit the post. Rebound is still free, and the Eagles survive. Boy, Zach Jones nearly had another. Not sure how that one didn't go in. Looked like it clean in off even the inside of the post and somehow just stayed out. Matt Boldy plays it forward. It's intercepted. Eric Faith coming back in. He is dragged down. Penalty coming on Boston College. Boldy headed off. It'll be a UMass power play when we return. It's a 3-1 BC lead. Nearly 3-2. But the post there to deny Zach Jones. Hi, I'd like to. Bye, bye. Bye. No, my terms. Sign. No. Bye. Bye. Woo! At McGovern Auto Group, we don't play karate. Schedule a visit today. McGovernAuto.com. We have the best teams in the country in our league. It gets your team better, and it gets your team ready to win national championships. Every night is a challenge with emphasis on every. But the players don't realize this. They make the coaches even better. Whatever school you're bringing in, unbelievable players. And they kind of make each other better. With players that are All-Americans, that are Kazmaier winners, I mean, it's amazing that we have so much talent in our league. Any good league has to have great players. We've got a lot of great players amongst the 11 teams. It makes the league premier league in college hockey. It's a UMass power play after this penalty on Matt Boldy. After the turnover, Boldy got caught behind the play and just wiped out Eric Faith. Once again, it's that fourth line for UMass that's creating opportunities and drawing penalties. Yeah, they've done a nice job creating things. And it was even that second kind of contact of the stick with Boldy. First one, the stick was down. It seemed like it was okay. But when it came up in the air and really took his player down, that's when penalty came out. Chance here for UMass as we wind down this second period. Minutemen on their third power play, 0 for their first two. Goals today for Jack McBain, twice and Mike Hardman for Boston College. Zach Jones is the only Minuteman goal. He scored it short-handed earlier this period. Jones just hit the post about a minute before the last break. Here's Chow in the corner, bangs into Warren, trickles away to Carson Jasevich, a transfer from St. Lawrence, where he was recruited by Greg Carville, never played for him, and now here in his fifth year, plays for the coach who originally recruited him. Jones winds up, rips it off Jasevich and into the corner. 
Well, you got to watch for Jones wherever he is on the ice. He's a sniper. Had a great year last year as a freshman. Again, one of these classic blue liners that Greg Carville has made his trade with UMass. Chow holds at the circle. Up top, one-timer Kessel, and Knight sees it the whole way. You don't beat Spencer Knight from the blue line if he's not screened. And there were some bodies in front, UMass trying, but BC did a pretty good job keeping that lane clear for Spencer Knight to find the puck. Jack O'Vain out to take the draw for Boston College, shorthanded. Josh Lapina takes the power play face off and wins it. Still a minute 20 left on the man. Advantage score! Felix threw it through. It was deflected in front. And it's Josh Lapina claiming credit as he leads the line. Well, this time Spencer Knight was screened, and it's a great job by UMass creating that presence in front, and maybe even tipped. Yep, it was. Yep. Lupina knocked it down in front. That's a great job by a freshman who's played really big minutes for UMass. Was incredible as his center taking face-offs last weekend, 70% face-offs in his first weekend. So Josh Lapina scores, he wins the face-off, and he makes the redirection in front. It's a 3-2 lead for Boston College. So UMass has had a couple of answers here. They score on the power play for the first time today. A little flip ahead by Felix, who picks up an assist on that goal. That was his shot from the blue line that was deflected. Now John Franco Casero. Hardman forces the turnover, tried to knock it in front. It squirts away from Boldy. Casero leading the other way. Stop, pop, Harding in front. Backhander denied. Spencer Knight makes the save. Another chance in front, never makes it through. Here's Boldy headed the other way. Ambrosio loops it behind net. Bouncing puck held in by McBain at the blue line. He scored twice today already. Odd angled wristers straight into Matt Murray's midsection. 3.55 to go in the second. This has been a fun one between two teams that, if things go as planned, will likely be at the top of the standings this year. Certainly doesn't feel like we're that early into the season. These are two really good hockey teams, two teams that are playing like they deserve to be in the top 10 in the country. And playing like they are going to be destined for big things in Hockey East and beyond this year. Top line out for Boston College. It's the second line for UMass, and Lapina wins another important faceoff against McBain. Long pass out for Bobby Trevino. Icing's waved off as Trevino's there before Powell. Trevino centers, looking for McDonald. Delayed pass, score! Rapina again! We're tied! The extra pass from McDonald frees up the freshman Lapina for his second goal. And here's where you can see the size of UMass helping them convert this goal. Lupina's gonna come in. He's got a good three or four inches on the guys he's playing in front, just uses his body to burst his way in, get around Eamon Powell, and find the back of the net. Quick sequence, quick response by UMass. Very impressive work by the Minutemen to get back in this game and tie it up. So Josh Lapino scored his first goal of his college career about a minute ago. Now he has a second. Assist to McDonald and Trevino, 3-3, with 3.25 to go in the second. Jake Gaudet starts it forward. Here's Carson Jasevich. Warren knocks it along to Patrick Giles. Once again, we are seeing the scoring depth of Patrick Giles. Once again, we are seeing the scoring depth of UMass. There's no one line that has dominated the scoring today. Instead, you've seen the second line. You've seen the fourth line. You, you really haven't seen much of the first line. Do you 
love to have a star player, but the thing that UMass will have going for it this year, it's a lot harder for coaches to match up their best defensive line against you when you're not sure where the offense is going to come from. Yeah, and I think that's exactly right. UMass has done a really good job playing their lines and putting them in good situations, matching up well, creating opportunities with the players they have. And, and let's be clear here, when we talk about UMass needing to find scoring, that conversation comes from the fact that they had some guys the last couple of years who were outstanding top 10 guys in the country in terms of scores. This is still a top 10 team in the country and predicted there for a reason. They have a lot of good players. It's just these guys haven't put up the numbers that we're accustomed to seeing for some of UMass's top scorers the last few years. Yeah, last year was John Leonard who scored the game winner here against Boston College. Mitchell Chafee the year before that obviously was Kobe Baker winner Kale McCarr. This year, it, it feels much more like a team for this UMass group, but a team that's going to be outstanding throughout the course of the year. Here's Oliver Chow heading the other way. Two goals over the last three minutes for the Minutemen to turn a 3-1 deficit into a 3-3 game. Chow over the blue line, rolls off a check. Here's a rip from Laganov, and Spencer Knight sees this one. Eric Spencer was sharp in the first period, has not been as sharp here in the second. Yeah, and I think that's a credit to UMass doing a good job. That first one goes in, and I think that was just Jones saying, and Spencer Knight expecting a pass, and, and Jones beating him, and then it's just been bodies in front, one on the deflection, one on just hard work, making it difficult for Spencer Knight to win on his positioning alone. We have five goals in this second period. It was one nothing BC after one. And now 3-3 here late in the second. Bollinger rips it on Knight, and he makes the save. No rebound. 23 saves tonight for Knight on 26 UMass shots. Shots right now are 26-21, Minutemen. Powell forward on the breakout. Ambrosio with speed. Colby Ambrosio's in. Murray the save and the rebound's knocked away from Hartman. Alger who came back and made a great play to take that puck away from Hartman on the rebound. Lyndon Alger who did not dress on Saturday back in the lineup with Del Geizo out and he has had a strong performance today. Now it's Eric Faith again. Feeds the blue line Zach Jones. Zigzagging Jones, rips it on, redirected by Del Geizo over the crossbar. Mark Del Geizo, the top defenseman, did not dress today. His brother Anthony has had an impact as a fourth line forward on a fourth line that's been really strong. Here come the Minutemen again. Del Geizo rips it, blocked over the crossbar. 1-10 to go in the second period. Long stretch forward, that missed Nesterenko. That is icing on the Eagles. All the momentum with UMass right now really controlling the last quarter of this period. Yeah, it was really impressive how the Minutemen changed this period around. It did it quickly, too. And remember, even after the first goal that UMass scored, BC got two in a row, McBain making it 3-1. But UMass has really done a nice job, and it starts with this young man right here, Josh Lopina. What he's doing at the face-off dot, what he's doing right in front of the net. This is the kind of player that it's not an NHL draft pick, but it's a really solid find for Greg Carville. Two goals in a minute and 13 seconds for Lopina to turn 3-1 down into 3-3 as we hit the final minute of this second period. McBain does enough to touch it up and wave off the icing. Now applying the forecheck to Jones. Rolls back to Matthew Pessel as Hutzko harasses him. Lapina forward, his pass looking for McDonald, who is tied up with Warren, and that turns into an ice. Marshall Warren canceled Oliver McDonald out of the play. And that'll be an offensive zone draw for the Eagles with 33 and a half seconds to go in the second. Eagles, the end of the kind of period for Boston College where you're just trying to not make a big mistake, get into the room, reset, and jump out the way you did early in this second period. And for UMass, pushing for one more with this momentum. BC sends out its third line, Giles, McLaughlin, and Kuntar. Here's Kuntar, Bruins' third round pick in his first collegiate game. Giles overlaps McLaughlin, centering for Kuntar, broken up. Zach Jones is there. 
So he's done it on offense with a shorthanded goal, and there is an important intervention on defense. Yeah, I really expect him to be one of the best defensemen in the league this year. He was leaving last year as a freshman. Seconds tick away, and boy, we've got a good 20 minutes still to come. Boston College and UMass picked at the top of the Hockey East standings, and after a second period that saw five goals, we head to the third, knotted up at three. Jack McBean's had a day. Two goals, that one made it 3-1 BC, but Josh Lapina goes back-to-back -back for UMass, and the Minutemen level things off after two. Is even though a lot of folks around the country feel like because like because so much their core is back, even beyond that senior class, they were one of the favorites to win it all going into this year. And I think UMass, because of what they put together as a program, certainly in that category as well, been a fun two period to be a fun third, Bill. UMass in the maroon, Boston College in the white, and I agree, Eric. We got the two best teams in Hockey East, at least on paper. Two of the top ten teams in the country, and we're tied at three. It's a sprint to the finish here in the third period. UMass sitting at 1-0-1 on the season. This is the season opener for Boston College. In front of, say, about 15 folks speckled throughout the stand. You have the players who aren't dressed today. You have a couple of scouts as well, and then just us. But we're so glad to have you with us wherever you are watching on Nesson or online. And uh, we're excited to bring you throughout the course of the year as much Hockey East action as we can. You can see how things are spaced out a bit. That's uh, the Boston College equipment manager who is behind the bench instead of on the bench. The backup goalie is in the penalty box for Boston College. That's Henry Wilder. He did nothing to deserve to be in the penalty box. <laughs> They're just putting him there for distancing purposes. UMass starting with its second line centered by Josh Lapina, and why not? He scored the last two goals in the final five minutes of that second period. Here's Bobby Trevino, who's had an assist on one of Lapina's two goals. That's really been the group for UMass. I mean, done a lot. We've talked about the fourth line a lot, but Trevino early on in the game, and then Lapina, what he did at the end of that second period, really have stood out in terms of the forwards for the minimum. BC second line, two sophomores, Hardman and Boldy, along with the freshman Ambrosio out there for the Eagles. Comes all the way back to the freshman, Eamon Powell. The BC defense is not a big group, as here's an opportunity. Inside score, Matt Boldy! Well, he scored just one goal in the first 10 games last season. He has a goal in the opener this year. Eric, that came out of nowhere. Well, look at the burst here. Let's start it all the way to the other end of the ice. Great pass, and then just a perfect feed to set up Boldy. And boy, it's McBain earlier, and then Boldy with the shot. It started with Powell in the back, and then a perfect pass to get onto Boldy's stick. We talked about coming out of the third period off to a quick start for BC, and boy, did they. Well, and Eamon Powell may have been listening, because I, I was about to say, Boston College defensemen are not big. Eamon Powell, the best example of that, 5'11", 165, but they are incredibly skilled, and that was an amazing pass from Eamon Powell, who was a fourth-round Tampa Bay Lightning pick this year, and another one of those guys who had first-round talent, but maybe not first-round size. Yeah, I think you really look at this whole freshman class, and sometimes it's easy to fall back on putting a general thought on a freshman class. There's a lot of different players in a freshman class. It's whoever you can find and whoever you can recruit as icing here goes against the Eagles. But if you look at this class as a whole for BC, it's a lot of guys that kind of fit that category. Maybe a little undersized, but incredibly skilled. And that is skill right there from Boldy. I mean, there's just no chance. And the other freshman that was the middle of that play was Ambrosio, who just tapped it along as well to pick up his first collegiate assist. Eamon Powell has his second assist of the game. He assisted on the opener as well. So a great debut for the 18-year-old from Marcellus, New York, just outside of Syracuse. And it's a 4-3 Boston College lead. A big start to the period for the Eagles. We mentioned how UMass had the momentum heading to the second intermission. Here's Zach Jones, a goal already today. His shot's blocked right off Boldy. Kessel puts it on, and Knight fights it out. Boldy felt that one. He still hasn't made his way back up as it caught him inside the shin. And that's good work by Boldy to immediately go to the ground. He's hurting right now, trying to fight through it, making a good defensive play. Hardman clears it only as far as the blue line. Boldy still can't get off the ice. This is basically a power play for UMass. This BC's playing with four and a half right now. Jones in. 
But the shot through, redirected, comes down off Hellison, and it's behind net. Now Boldy finally makes it off the ice. The Eagles send Patrick Giles out. Jones playing with a lot of confidence right now. Of course, scored that goal earlier against Spencer Knight, set up one on the deflection try, and you can see him back there. He feels like he's got Spencer Knight's number right now, and that's a good feeling to have if you're a shooter against a goaltender the cal caliber of Spencer Knight. 240 gone in the third period. Boston College leading 4-3 on Matt Boldy's goal, but now Boldy off the ice being checked on by the athletic trainer after blocking a shot on the inside of the shin. He's on the bench. He's up, and he's trying to walk it off right now. Good shot. Lapina short side looking for the hat trick. Ripped it just wide of goal. Rolls all the way out to John Franco Casero. Casero dressed for the first time this season tonight. As both Mark Del Geizo and Ty Farmer are out of the lineup today. And now the Minutemen come in offside. See Matt Boldy walking it off after blocking his shot. Here's a guy who's one of the top offensive players in the country. A first round draft pick. Gives up the body here. Yeah, that's an impressive play out in front for Matt Boldy. Really amazing how he kind of just hung in last year. You know, snake bitten is the word that comes to mind. He had so many shots, they just were not going in. It felt like it was going to come, but at some point you have to keep your confidence up. And Boldy was able to do that. He's shooting over 30% finally in the last 10 games after scoring just two goals up until that point at the beginning of the season. Here's Oliver Chow in the corner. Top line out for UMass. They have not generated much today. The Chow Wait Laganov line trying to get something going here. Wait to the top for Alger. It's knocked away. Logan Hutsko, and he's off to the races. Boston College's Logan Hutsko is denied. Matt Murray with his biggest save of the night. Good angle that time by Murray. Fading Husko to go to that outside. He tried it in a good save. Here's Nikita Nesterenko. Deking shooting knocked away. An open ice benefits the speedy and skilled Eagles here. There's been a lot of it in this third period. Boston College has caught off sides. Boy, Murray's made some good saves in this game. Let's start with the Huts go one. Watch as he kind of leans in, holding that left side, but good enough positioning that there was just nowhere to shoot for Huts go. And then here's the skilled freshman Nestorenko coming in. And Murray just sliding that right pad across. It was down. Remember, he got beaten five hole earlier, Bill, but he did not that time. Heck of a save by Murray. How about the patience, though, there by Nestorenko, the freshman holding his ground, didn't pull the trigger early, and created a really good look. A little more than four minutes gone in the period. Boston College leading 4 3. Wrist shot from the points, fought off by Knight. Matthew Kessel follows his miss, and he has it behind net. Mitch Andrus defensively throws his body into Kessel and clears it back out. By the way, Matt Boldy is back on the ice for this shift, so he did not miss a shift, though he did earn himself a nice bruise when he wakes up tomorrow. Jake Donat, the UMass captain, puts on a backhander, and Knight's there to smother it again. Well, the question was, how are Mike Hardman and Matt Boldy going to react to missing Alex Newhook? I'm sure they miss him. But you haven't seen it today. A goal for each of them continuing the hot streak that that trio, which is now a duo at least until January, was on at the end of last year. Well, it shows how good they are as individuals and what they're capable of together. Again, remember, last nine games last year together, the only guy who had more points in the country than Matt Boldy was Alex Newhook. And they were three of the top five and plus minus among forwards in the country. BC had five of the top nine in plus minus during that stretch of individuals when he throw in Finkelstein and Matala. Just amazing what that group did playing together at the end of the year. And I cannot wait for Alex Newhook to get that. That is icing, a long pass looking for Faith, and Jones missed him. Again, Newhook is gone until January in Red Deer, Alberta, where the World Juniors will be held this year in a bubble. Some other college coaches tried to hold their Canadian players back. Team Canada with a really long bubble here, whereas Team USA is going to shorten that and just have it midway through December. Jerry York said, I never get in the way of my players when they have an opportunity. It was important for Alex to be on this team, and, and I wanted him to go. And remember, because Alex Newhook was left off of last year's World Junior Canadian roster, it meant that much more. And that was arguably the motivation that really propelled Newhook through the second half that he did. 
and it was just so important that tournament being played in his native Canada this year. And it's because Canada is having its development camp right now that they're bubbling. The U.S. development camp already happened before the college season started, so it's really two bubbles that New Hook will be a part of. Here's a backhander on the doorstep. Murray made the first save. Puck trickles through the slot and comes up to Drew Hellison. He slides it into the corner. Casey Carew out there with the fourth line for Boston College. Carew's on angle wrister, easily handled. Murray makes another save. So the United States players will go into bubble for World Juniors and, and lead into that tournament. Should be a lot of fun that tournament this year. And, uh, again, gonna be very different than most World Juniors. It may be in Canada, but there will not be a lot of fans waving the Maple Leaf as they'll play behind closed doors in Alberta. But for those players, World Juniors is so special, and it's particularly special in Canada. That's the country that's really embraced it maybe more than any other. Last year, they did not take any NCAA players, and that's why Newhook was left off the team this year. I don't think anyone's leaving Alex Newhook off that team. Here's a centering feed. In front, shot goes just wide of Spencer Knight. UMass fans remember, even when Kale McCarr was on the team two years ago, he saw limited ice time as well. There tends to be a Team Canada bias toward players who play in, in major juniors in Canada. Here's a long pass forward looking for Nikito Nesterenko, but it's icing. I want to go back to that last sequence. Really good work by Oliver Chow beating icing down the ice, and it led to that UMass chance which got a couple opportunities in front of Spencer Knight. Good work by the first line left winger, someone that if you had to pick someone to replace the production of a John Leonard from last year, Chow certainly is someone that Craig Carville expecting big things out of as part of this full unit's worth of forwards. He had five goals, 14 assists last year, already a goal and two assists for the opening two games this year. Matthew Castle comes in deep, puts it off Knight, ricocheted off his glove and just wide. Spencer's had to fight some off today. It has not been his cleanest game by any stretch, but so far he's done enough to keep Boston College on top 4-3. A lot of bodies in front for UMass today. Gaudet throws it behind goal. His pass way too strong. Rolls all the way back to center, where Zach Jones beats Logan Hutzko to it. Gaudet bounces off Colby Ambrosio. Here's Mike Hardman in onside. Hardman puts it on. Murray knocks it away with his glove. Yeah, he had Hutzko across, but just too many sticks in the way. Couldn't get that pass in, so decided to shoot it. Good job by Murray. Hardman's down in the corner. His pass underneath Ambrosio. Up to Marshall Warren. He's hit hard. Jesovich staples him into the glass. Drew Hellison moving the defense. Takes a shot. Save Murray. And it stops play with 12.48 to go in the third. Boston College up a goal. PNC Bank believes that if an app can help you track your pizza, on, Cody, where are you, buddy? then your bank should have the technology to help you track your spending. Virtual Wallet is so much more than a checking account. Easily see what's free to spend and see where your money is going so you can budget even better. Okay, he's gotta be close. He's six blocks in the other direction. Make a left, make a left, make a left. He made a right again. Virtual Wallet for digital banking from PNC. It's time to get more from your bank. If you're looking for the best selection of everything for hockey and more, then come to Sports Etc. in Arlington, Mass. Since 1980, the experts at Sports Etc. have been properly fitting hockey players from beginners to pros, with trusted brands at great prices. Let the pros at Sports Etc. get you skating in the right direction. Visit Sports Etc. today for all your hockey needs. Well, if you're just joining us, UMass was down 3-1 late in the second. Got back-to-back -back goals from freshman Josh Lapina to tie things at three, heading to the third. Really good work by Lapina. This one getting right in front of the net. UMass getting bodies in, but a quick change for BC. Coming out in the third period, Matt Boldy with a quick wrister set up by a couple of freshmen to get Boston College back into the lead, which is where we stand right now. So season opener for second-ranked Boston College. Second weekend for seventh-ranked UMass to 4-3 Boston College lead. UMass only gave up more than four goals once last year. It was a six-goal outing for Boston College. And Amherst, once again, the Eagles knocking on the door of getting to five and maybe six. 
Marshall Warren into the corner. Right now, the four goals for Boston College is after season average last year. They were second in the nation, averaging four goals a game. Oh, Warren just got crushed, and they'll stop play. Up slowly, and looks to be okay, but that is the one area where Boston College cannot absorb any losses this year. They are very thin on the blue line. Yeah, absolutely. You see the hit right there. It looked like he kind of got caught in an odd area. It wasn't so much the hit, but... Warren will head back to the bench, able to skate off under his own power. I think the whistle ended up being for offsides. Yeah, or a hand pass. Beg your pardon, hand pass. Yeah, just kind of contact in an odd area. Yep. The abdomen and sometimes get a stinger. Here's Giles putting one through the corner. Skips all the way back up to the blue line. He's whacked around. Shoehorns off the dashers and almost works an outlet pass for Bollinger. Kuntar does a great job sealing him off and boxing him out. Taking lessons from Joanna Burnaby McNamee and the Boston College women's basketball coaching staff there. That was good rebounding skill from Trevor Kuntar. Well, the Bruins certainly excited to have him. A little bit older again, as we said, than the rest of this freshman class for BC. 19 years of age, even though draft eligible this year. Played at Youngstown in the USHL last year where he had a really strong season. Straight away rips it through traffic and Ellison blocks the shot. Comes to Casero. His wrister's blocked again. Rebound and 90 knocks it away, and now it's loose in front. A lot of bodies in front. The Eagles shielding their sophomore netminder. Boston College clears, and it was deflected by Casero, so icing is wiped off. The Eagles can change. Nine minutes gone in the third. The only goal this frame, Matt Boldy, putting Boston College ahead 4 3. Another shift for BC's fourth line. Roy, Waits, and Carew. Knight will play it himself. Works it ahead to Carew. Ricochet off the boards, comes all the way back to Zach Jones, who scored UMass's first goal today, shorthanded. Jones up top, good pass, finds Chow on a dime. Has his teammate streaking in, searching for Waite, and it went through his wickets. That was a great chance for UMass. Peru the other way. His shot deflected up high and skipping off the netting for an offensive zone draw. Yeah, Carew did enough there to get his stick in the way. Let's go back to Kuntar defensively coming back on the play. Good work to get back and, and just do enough against Bollinger. Kuntar out of Buffalo, again went to the USHL, played for Youngstown, drafted by the Bruins this year originally, scheduled to go to Harvard, but with COVID and things changing in the scheduling, elected relatively late in the game to come play at Boston College instead. For checking pressure, Jack McBain knocks it free, scored twice already today. McBain just muscles through Jones, running him over. Six foot, 205 junior, and he looks bigger than he has the last couple of years. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because we're closer to the ice this year, or he's gotten even bigger, but really maturing into his body as a junior, and they expect big things. Key Fuke down the dashers, centers all the way through the goal mouth. Putz goes there to scoop up the loose puck. Ahead to McBain, trying to get it back to Husko, broken away and jabbed forward. Kifu plays it well. Comes to Jasevich, former captain at St. Lawrence, who transferred to UMass this year. Alger slides it low. Lapina in the corner. He absorbs a big bump. Lapina going head to head with senior defenseman Michael Caro. It's still tied up in the corner. And now a holding call coming on Boston College. So Lapina kept on battling. Eventually he jaws the penalty. And UMass will be on the power play when we come back to Boston. To defend against dark forces attacking your organization, you need to see in the dark. To have the wisdom to understand multiple cyber threats. The precision focus to end attacks instantly on computers, mobile devices, servers, and the cloud. Join the world's leading companies in our mission to defend. Cyber Reason. End cyber attacks from endpoints to everywhere. Introducing Budweiser Zero. 
Zero percent alcohol, zero grams of sugar, full Budweiser flavor. A refreshing alcohol-free brew that tastes like the real thing. Budweiser Zero, zero compromise. At Honda, we take the holidays seriously. Visit Happy Honda Days to get a great offer on the CRV. Well, UMass go on the power play here, down a goal, 9.26 to go. This is just really hard work by Josh Lapina, winning a one-on-one -on -one battle and eventually drawing the penalty against Caro. Yeah, how about the game Lapina has played, and really the first couple of games, because he was really good last weekend as well, against Connecticut, and just kind of hard work there by Caro, and they end up getting the holding call out, so great opportunity here. For UMass. And it wasn't until the end. It was once he changed directions, you saw Caro's arm was holding him up, and that's what eventually drew the penalty. But that took a lot of hard work. Power play, UMass. Lapina, who scored a power play goal, will start this power play on the bench. They go with Chow, Jasevich, Kessel, Jones, and Trevino. The five for UMass, one for three so far today on the power play. The Eagles get an important face-off win from Mark McLaughlin and clear it. Worth noting, we haven't mentioned it yet, part of the new rules this year, the, you can choose which side to take the face-off on starting a power play. UMass choosing the side to the right of Spencer Knight. Good face-off win for BC. Back to the offensive end. UMass is a minute 35 left on the power play. Boley banging at it defensively. Minutemen keep it in. Here's Kessel feeding in front. Pass blocked. Rebound, no. Second try. Knight comes across and it went wide. Here's Chow. Really good setup so far for UMass. Minute 19 left on the power play. Trevino circling. Loops it back to Chow. Centering all the way through. Just Savage fanned on it. Boy, that puck was wide open on the side of the net with Kisevich. Knight sprawling over. Not sure if he got a piece or it just went wide, but good opportunity for UMass. Really good start to their power play. Here comes McDonald now back checking Nesterenko. Knocked it free, but into his own end. Rolls all the way around, and it's finally cleared. That required Drew Hellison to make a strong intervention. Warren on the side of his own goal plays it behind net. Lapina out there now, that second unit, which converted a power play goal for UMass. Lapina with McDonald and Keithuke, the forwards. Aaron Bollinger defensively working against Nestorenko finds Colin Felix. Stretch pass looking for McDonald, too tall, and Eamon Powell sends it down with 20 seconds left on the Minuteman power play. Keithuke into the corner. Warren in front of Lapina feeds McBain. He knocks it the rest of the way, and there's just 10 seconds left on this man advantage. Hessel has some good speed. Cross ice. Harding settles it down, looking for Anthony Del Geizo. We are back to five on five hockey. Faith through traffic. Andrus blocks it. Rebound out in front, and McBain turns it around. On the money to Mike Hardman forward. Has Hutzko with him. Hardman wraps it behind goal. UMass now one for four on the power play, still down a goal, 7-10 to play. Lyndon Alger Rister, and that is routine for Spencer Knight. Well, early in the power play, best chance here for UMass. And let's look at this open opportunity on the side of the net. We'll come in a second. And just a great look at it for UMass. But, Bill, as the power play went on, Boston College did a better job adjusting, and that back half of the penalty kill was very impressive. Here, let's take a look at it. You look at the work coming back, and then the net is wide open here, and it's Matt Boldy, a diving play, coming back in to break it up. Boldy's been really good in this third period, offensively and defensively. He has a goal and a assist that block shot earlier and now Boston College will go right back to the penalty kill Mike Hardman stick up high right into the face mask Garrett Waite draws the penalty power play Minutemen so Hardman off for high sticking and those tired penalty killers for Boston College will go right back to work with 658 to go and again good momentum out of the early part of the power play for UMass and there yep just a kind of a high stick Hardman, not even sure Hardman knew that 
is coming in to his left. Stick going up and just got caught. Well, that is where uh, we are very fortunate that this is the college game and face masks are required. Power play UMass. Again, they start with Chow, Trevino, and Laganov at the forward positions. Kessel and Jones defensively. Michael Caro clears it. He will have fresh legs. He was in the box for that last penalty. Boston College trying to hold on to a 4-3 lead. UMass looking to get one late. Chow to the outside. Kessel plays it behind goal. Knight tried to slow it down and skip past him. Ellison battling for it, gets it forward to Boldy, played into space, McLaughlin does just enough to knock it out. He feeds Boldy one-on-one with Jones. Boldy delaying, just takes it to the corner and eats clock, 40 seconds and counting, gone on the penalty against Hardman. More good work from Boldy, who's showing improved defense as a sophomore. You've been really impressed with him in, in this third period, and the goal he scored is pretty far down on that list in this third period for what he's done for BC. Here's Trevino spinning. Well, maybe far down, but it's also the most important it moment was. in this game with Boston College ahead 4-3 on Boldy's goal. Just speaks to what he's done defensively here these last few minutes. Hutzko pressuring Bollinger, who spins away and makes a good pass to Felix. Now Kifu carries. Still 40 seconds left on UMass's fifth power play today. The Minutemen are one for their first four. Overall, four for 15 on the season, better than 25%. Let's go straight in the bench. Boy, that buzzed Jerry York just over the head of the longtime college hockey coach. Continuing here on the penalty kill for Boldy, and again, it's just a smart veteran play here. Just takes it right into the corner, going to take off as much time as possible off of the PK. Boldy here, and we talked about this whole BC team, there's not that many seniors, so even underclassmen type guys are going to have to play in some of those veteran senior roles for this to work with the success that BC is expecting this year. 30 seconds left on the power play for the Minutemen, still down a goal, only 5.20 to play. Jones holds. Chow looking down low. Trevino centering for Jasevich and Knight kicks it away. Right pad. Eagles clear. Good positioning with that right pad for Spencer Knight. Final five seconds of the man advantage. Boston College has weathered another UMass push. Minutemen with three shots on that power play. That goes right out of play. It was Trevino in deep, flipped it up over the glass. 4.52 to go, and Boston College holding on to a one-goal lead. Do you have any idea how your mattress affects your body and how well you sleep? Is it too hard or too soft, causing you to wake up with sore shoulders, back, or hips? Are you uncomfortable because you're too hot or too cold? Now you can get the total body support you need and the better sleep you want with the new MyPillow mattress topper. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. When I invented my new MyPillow mattress topper, I made it to have everything you'd ever want in a topper. My mattress topper helps give you the support you need, helps relieve your pressure points, and regulates your body temperature for you as an individual. It comes with a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry the cover. It's made in the USA, and I back it with my 60-day money-back guarantee. MyPillow topper delivers on its promise to give me a better night's sleep. Call now to get your very own MyPillow mattress topper. Use the promo code and Mike will give you 30% off and two standard MyPillows absolutely free. Order now. I personally guarantee it's going to change your bed into the most comfortable bed you'll ever own. Inside the final five minutes of the third period, season opener for second-ranked Boston College, leading 4-3 over seventh-ranked UMass, who's 1-0-1 on the year. Need some pressure on Spencer Knight, who has stood strong in the third period. Four goals doesn't sound like a great night for Matt Murray, but he's come up big in a couple of breakaway situations here in this third period to keep the score at 4-3. Yeah, he's made a couple of A saves in this game to keep UMass close, keep UMass in it early, allow them to come back in and keep it 4-3 where we are right now. Top two teams in the preseason Hockey East poll. Boston College picked first for the third consecutive year there. The defending Hockey East regular season champs. UMass picked second. Anthony Del Gaizo spins in the offensive end for the Minutemen. This is that fourth line that's been tremendous today, getting ice time here late down a goal. Bollinger up top. 
Across the ice, Faith, he fanned on the pass, and now the pressure comes. Marshall Warren spins off him, loses a glove, and the puck trickles behind net. Eamon Powell tying up. Harding spins away from Powell. Del Geizo puts it on. Knight easily escorts it into the corner. Powell spins off Harding again, and it's cleared the rest of the way by a tumbling Trevor Kuntar. There's a high fly ball to center, and it goes over the top of Jack McBain and back to Drew Hellison. Long stretch pass. Eagles had a lot of those today. This one ends up with an icing. But you take that risk reward looking for Nestorenko on the breakaway. It has netted Boston College a goal already today. Yeah, we saw it with Matt Boldy, and that's the difference in this game right now. The goal to start the third period to make it a 4-3 game. UMass again. Last four minutes here, it's about bodies in front. Just try to get everything in and then get that deflection off of the rebound in the rare case that it comes. Here's Drew Hellison playing it off the dasher boards. Comes all the way out to Zach Jones again. UMass's goals today from Zach Jones and then two from Josh Lapina. Boston College has gotten two goals from Jack McBean and a goal apiece from Matt Boldy and Mike Hardman. Here's McBean again. Flips it forward to Logan Hutsko. Last year, Hutsko scored 19 goals for Boston College. With a lot of speed, Hutsko spins. Still trying to muscle his way in. Leaves it for McBain behind net. 3.25 to play third period. Hutsko applying the forecheck. Knocks it away from Kessel. Jones stretching forward. Oh, and BC caught in a change. Here's Keith Duke in. Finds the trailer. Just seven drips. Knight makes the save. And again, does not leave a rebound. Good save that time by Spencer Knight. And again, he allowed the one to Jones early, but here able to get his positioning on point. Good lane in, but just nowhere to shoot that puck. Spencer Knight catches it. 3.11 to go in this third period. UMass again applying pressure forward. Josh Lapina wins the faceoff. Seeing some tinkering of the lines for Greg Carville. Lapina out there with Trevino and Chow. A different look combining part of the first line and part of the second line. Well, if he can win faceoffs the way he's won faceoffs the first couple of games, that's Josh Lapina. And he can now add this offensive element. He's getting those minutes. Up top, bouncing puck from Felix skips wide of Spencer Knight. Lapina on the forecheck loses it to Powell. BC breaking out the other way. Full out of steam, Colby Ambrosio. He's in. Ambrosio, backhander, poke checked away. Murray makes the intervention. Here's Powell up top, cross ice, Warren's wrister blocked, fluttering high, comes back down to Warren, rolling in, Murray will freeze it, 2.27 to go. Boy, that looked like Logan Hutsko coming up the middle, didn't it? I mean, you talk about maybe guys who are slightly undersized, but with a ton of speed. How about this from Ambrosio? Watch where he gets his start. Beats one, beats two, doesn't get a great shot in, and Murray does a pretty good job with his stick to take the shot away. Deserves a lot of credit there. That's a good job by Murray. Well, well done you by Murray. See the speed there. Yeah, and well done by Felix to not take a penalty there. But you're right. Ambrosio probably was five feet behind Felix when he started, and he blew right past him. 2.20 to play. Still 4 3 Boston College. Lone goal this period belongs to the Eagles. Matt Boldy. Shots are 32 aside here late in the third. 29 saves for Spencer Knight, 28 for Matt Murray. McLaughlin going hard, drives into Zach Jones. Eric, you and I talked about this before the game. You know, Spencer Knight might have a stat line this year that doesn't look amazing just because of the style Boston College is going to play, even when he's playing pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, Spencer Knight, if we've learned anything from last year, he's going to keep you in every game. He's going to bounce back really well. He's going to make the routine saves every time. And he's probably not going to make a lot of spectacular saves because his positioning is so good that he doesn't need to make the spectacular save. There really, are less opportunities to make right, a spectacular exactly. save. That's exactly yeah. right. They talk about, you know, a good defender in baseball never has to make a diving play because they're so good at getting in position. That's what we're talking about with Spencer Knight. And, you know, it's rare to have a player have that much hype coming in as Spencer Knight did through his whole youth career and then back it up the way he did last year. Inside the final 100 seconds, here's Bobby Trevino for UMass. Minutemen still down a goal, and here comes Murray to the bench. Extra attacker out for UMass. Net is empty. Logan 
Logan Hutsko's breakout pass comes on back. Warren forward. Nestorenko just ladles it in deep with a minute 23 to go. BC up a goal. Here's Jake Gaudet. Cross ice. A big crunching blow from Warren on Colin Felix with a minute 10 to play. Net still empty for the Minutemen. Hutsko flips it forward, targeting the goal line. He misses wide. It's icing. Good work there by Jack McBain, forcing his way to get that puck, and he helped get it out to Hutsko to leave the zone there. Does Jerry York take his time out here after the icing, give his guys a blow? Saw one or two hands on hips there, but see if Jerry York decides to do it, and he is indeed going to in this one. Oh, so close. He waited for a while there to, to give his guys even extra time for a breather. Now we'll take the time out. And you can see they needed it. Logan Hutsko has hands on knees as he makes his way over toward the Boston College bench. BC up 4-3 with a minute two to go in the season opener for the Eagles, the third game for the Minutemen. It was 3-1 Boston College before the Minutemen controlled the final five minutes of the second period and got two goals from Josh Lapina. Yeah, Josh Lapina has been so good in this game. That's the first one on a, the deflection from the point. This one just hard work to get in front of the net and had that backside open to knock in the puck, but then the stretch passing, the little tap from Ambrosio and Boldy with a snipe over the glove side of Matt Murray, and that is your difference maker here on opening night in Chestnut Hill at the moment. You feel like the breakout today for UMass has been Lopino. Yeah. They're going to find different and, guys throughout the course of the year. Here, here's a guy they find early on in game number three. And in fairness, on our call with Greg Carville this week, we asked about who he was impressed with from last week, and Lopino was right up there too. So it's not a new revelation. It is a continual revelation for this freshman out of Illinois and the way he's played so far this year. And as you said, maybe the most important thing for him is that he has won all the big face-offs today, and he's yeah. out for another crucial face-off. Net empty, out of the timeout, minute two to go. Lapina called on to take the draw on the offensive end against Boston College top-line center Jack McBain. McBain ties Lapina up. This time, Huck still free on the dot. It shot just wide of goal as Chow jumped on the loose puck. Castle back for Lapina. Straight away, Zach Jones holds. Downloaded Chow. 50 seconds remain. Chow rips it just wide. Screen was there in front of Spencer Knight. Marshall Warren uses the pitching wedge and serves it out through center. 40 seconds remain. Jones plays it back to Kessel. Long one forward. Chow dumps it in. Warren flips it back out again. Good turn on the ice for Marshall Warren here for Boston College. Here's Trevino in on side. Trevino centers across and Chow fanned on it. He was there at the back post undefended. Wow, what an opportunity. BC was a little late coming out off the change. Everything shifted to the opposite side of the ice. Left the backside wide open, but the pass just fluttered. Ambrosio took a rip at it. That is icing with eight seconds to play and it allows UMass one more opportunity to set up an offensive zone faceoff. Watch, he got three white jerseys over. Nobody's home on the other end but the just a skipping puck up in the air and Chow couldn't get his stick on it. Right, Carvel still has his timeout. But Boston College has some tired players out there. Regardless, Greg Carvel will take it. Final chance, eight seconds to go. This is where you draw off your best faceoff play. And again, part of the reason for this, remember we've been talking about Josh Lapino, who's been on the ice this whole time. That's who Greg Carvel wants taking his face off. So he is leaving this group on the ice. So now he takes his chance to set up with just under nine to go. So 4-3 Boston College lead. They'll play again tomorrow in Amherst. This is the schedule as it looks for now. I think you can make a pretty good bet this is not how the schedule will actually go between now and January 15th if you've followed Hockey East at all. We obviously hope the schedule goes like this, but there have been a lot of moving pieces around the league each of the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and it, it's just everybody deserves a lot of credit. Again, this game was not scheduled a week ago. This was two teams who did not have opponents. UMass has had two opponents that they were not expecting to play in either of their games so far. So it's the flexibility of these teams, all the good work done by the Hockey East Commissioner's Office under Steve Metcalf for the first time this year really deserve a lot of credit. And this has been an outstanding college hockey game early on in the year and should be a fun final nine seconds.
8.9 to be exact. That point one can make a big difference here in a one goal game. 4-3 Boston College lead. Again, Lapina on the draw for UMass. Boston College sends out Captain Mark McLaughlin to take the face off. Lapina and McLaughlin tie up. McLaughlin wins the face off and there's the clearance. It's icing with one point. No, they wipe it off as Ambrosio gets behind. He wins the race and that does it. Boston College holds on and beats UMass 4-3. Well, McLaughlin wins a big face-off against Lupino. We talked a lot about the face-offs there at the end of the game. Big win for BC. And then a great job winning the race down the ice to eliminate the icing and give Boston College its first win of the season to this top 10 matchup. Well, Mark McLaughlin is Boston College's best face-off man and captain. Josh Lapita has been UMass's best face-off man. McLaughlin takes it this time and again perfectly played out to Ambrosio to seal the deal. So Boston College ranks second in the nation. They open up the season with a 4-3 win to go to 1-0 on the year. UMass falls to 1-1-1. One, one, one. These teams play again tomorrow in Amherst at 4.30 on Nesson Plus. For Eric Galante and our entire crew, Bill Spalding saying goodnight from Chestnut Hill.